happy Friday. Once again, I was feeling great. So we've got about 42 miles, 123 minutes, one th oh, wait, 1,467 calories. I'm happy with the 42 miles, that's pretty good. I think I'm gonna go walk on the treadmill to cool down for a second. And I'm at 89% of the way through the Dragon Republic. So I went on the treadmill to cool down after biking, 42 miles or 43 miles, and I couldn't stop reading The Dragon Republic. Is that what it's called? Clearly I made it to the acknowledgements. Let's see, I haven't looked yet how long I've been walking. I'm scared. Oh my God, almost an hour. <laughs> so it's finished, done, yay. I'll catch you guys up um, with it later because I have a work meeting call at 11. So I have to shower and get stuff around for that. So I'll talk to you soon. I don't know for sure if I'm gonna even add this clip in, but I think that this is the first time you're seeing my face today. So happy Friday. It's rainy, gloomy, nasty here in Michigan today, which is like 99% of the time, the weather from October to like March, at least maybe through April. <laughs> we love Michigan. Anyways, um, I'm going to do a super quick grocery haul quicker than last time and just go over some of the things I got this week. Since you guys kind of liked it last time, skip ahead if you want. Try to make this really snappy. First, always need bell peppers, baby bell mushrooms, baby spinach for my salads. So the mushrooms and the peppers are for that roasted veggie tray that I make. Same thing with the cauliflower. This is the broccoli slaw that I'm talking about for my salads. I get these, except for they were out of the organic kind today, which is a little annoying. My phone just fell out of the cabinet. Anyways, the rest of this bag is full of raspberries for my salads, blueberries for my salads, and my acai bowls for dinner. More. I, it's absurd how much fruit I have to buy because it's expensive. I hate the amount of money that I have to spend on food. Strawberries for my acai bowls. Carly's loving life. Coconut milk for my acai bowls for dinner. I literally eat it every single night, so. And I get three cashew milks because I use just over two cups in my smoothie every morning, so I go through it like crazy, so more of those. One bag down. This is all just bro broccoli florets, and honestly, this won't even last me the whole week. That's how much broccoli I eat. Sickening, I know. Bananas for my acai bowls. This bag just broke on me like 10 times. Lemons, because I put fresh lemon in my tea every morning. Zucchini for the roasted veggie tray. Carrots for the roasted veggie tray. Brussels sprouts and sweet potatoes for the roasted veggie tray. English cucumbers for my salads. I will literally eat all of these organic frozen raspberries in one week's time. Three giant bags. I eat so much. It's a problem. Two bags down. Vanilla for my oatmeal. This is the coconut oil that I spray everything with. I cook my broccoli with it. I am obsessed with this. Like, I am a coconut oil fiend, a spray fiend. And then I portion out, instead of buying like the pre-packaged nut packages, I've been kind of making them myself. And I had ordered some of the stuff from Target. And I didn't want to make another Target order because I actually will run out of the stuff before it arrives. And there's not a, the closest target is like 30 minutes away from me. So I got like the banana chips, unsalted cashews, unsulfured, unsweetened mango. And then I like cut all up, rolled the mango and then put like little portion sizes of that together. So I'm super excited about that. That's it. That's the whole thing. Hopefully that was much quicker and much less boring. I think honestly tomorrow, I guess we'll find out once this vlog goes up, but I think that tomorrow I'm going to do a, I think tomorrow I'm going to do like a full day of eating, which is a little bit weird because those are kind of the kinds of vlogs that I used to watch because you guys probably don't know this about me, but I competed in the fitness industry for like many, many years. So I was a competitor, obviously. And I watched a lot of videos of competitors prepping for their shows because that's what I did. And I started out a YouTube channel making videos like that. So people do full days of eating, but I am very passionate about being plant-based and the food that I eat, etc. And I think 
that um, a lot of you guys have messaged me, um, even on Instagram or other places, to kind of see what I'm eating. And I love getting new ideas for food to eat, especially um, things that are really healthy, just because sometimes people don't know what to eat. So if I could help any of you guys make your lives easier by giving you ideas of things to eat, then I would love to do that. So I think that, yeah, tomorrow I will just quickly, like it's just going to be like quick, but go through what I eat. And that way you guys can get some ideas. So I'm going to scarf down some lunch. Got my groceries cleaned. My mom had to stop by this morning. And she actually got me a massage that I'm going to at 3.30 because I have been injured forever now after I tore my hamstring. And my legs are a disaster, a joke. And like I couldn't even walk earlier this week. And so hopefully that will help relieve some of the tension and knots that are there. I could cry. I'm so excited to go. So I will catch you guys after that and get some reading done talk about the dragon republic talk about my audiobook talk about my dnfs talk about the physical book i'm reading talk about the graphic novel i'm reading there's a lot going on the only reason my bed isn't made is because it's like 6 30 and i just put fresh sheets on my bed from the laundry so i wasn't gonna like make it I made it how I sleep in it. <laughs> I have to sleep with body pillows on both sides of me because I'm weird like that. In case you're wondering, the massage was phenomenal. I'm waiting for my vegetables to finish cooking so I can eat some dinner. And I didn't talk about any books with you guys today. So I need to set this camera down. My hair has never needed to be washed more. <laughs> That's okay, here we are. Shout out if you love Barry Allen as much as I do. Um, Let's see, talk about some books. So I should go get the book, but I really don't want to go get the book. I'm reading my physical copy that I started last Sunday. So I've been reading it. Well, Sunday basically, I got to like 50 pages I don't, or 20 pages. I don't know if that counts. So like I've been reading it for about six days, five and a half kind of, of The Reckoning of Gods. Oh, hey, here it is. Reckoning of Fallen Gods by Ari Salvatore. I'm this far. I don't keep my desk jackets on my books when I read them. Y'all are wild if that's what you're doing. I see people doing that in their reading vlogs. You really hold that slippery dust jacket on this? No. Plus it's like crinkly and annoying. It makes sounds. Yeah. Page 198 out of 432. This book's not good. Like literally the second book is not good. I wish that I didn't already own the physical copy so that I could get rid of it and or so that I could just DNF it. But because I already own it, I'm not going to DNF it. I know that's a dumb rule, but there are no used bookstores by me to like turn books into get any credits or money back. It's really dumb. Anyways, so I loved the first book to an extent. Like I think I gave it 3.75 or four stars, something like that. I really, by the end of it, was very interested in the characters and what was happening and where their story was going but it was not explored very well. So by the end of the first book, there were so many unanswered questions and so many things that we were not told. The reader was, you know, confused about things still. And so you go into book two and you're like, awesome, I'm gonna get all of these questions answered. Um, No, so I didn't read the synopsis of this and then I went back and read it. It's basically like a whole different plot to book two where a whole new race and group of characters is introduced that are basically trying to take over the land of where this coven lives from what I can understand. And let me tell you for R.A. Salvatore, I, like I said, I've read three of his A Legend of Drift's books and I got through that book pretty fine with his names. Like it didn't bother me. I'm not kidding you. I sent Snapchats of this book to my sister. There's like sometimes a whole sentence of places and names that are like 17 letters long, no vowels in them. So it's just like a word of consonants and you're like, can't pronounce it. And to me, that slows down. I can't just skip a word. So that slows down my reading so much. And it feels like you're reading another language. It takes me out of the story. I know it's very petty. Let me know if any of you guys have experienced this reading anything before. And like I said, I'm not new to fantasy. So therefore reading fantastical names and places is not a problem. It doesn't bother me. It is only his writing because of how prevalent it is. It drives me insane. So anyways, that's just a petty thing about the book. The um, other thing is that I don't care at all about the new characters and the new race that's introduced because I just want the, I want my answers from, ooh, I got that massage and she put that like 
stuff that makes you hot and cold when she was massaging my neck and I need to go shower now because it's like gross and sticky and on me. Anyways, I just don't care about their story and we're getting not as much from the main characters from the last book that we really enjoyed. So it's just very bizarre to me, very confusing. I read a lot of reviews for the second book already because I'm thinking like, is this just me or does everyone feel this way? And it seems to be the consensus and I hear that it ends terribly you get no answers. So I'm like, well, that's great news to look forward to. So I'm actually like not skim reading, like I'm still reading it, but I'm reading the sections with that newer race way faster than I would normally read because I, I literally don't care. All I want to know is what's happening to our main characters from the first book and see what happens to them because everything left off on a cliffhanger. I don't know. It's just bad. I really don't think it's good. And the thing that sucks is like the parts are good once we get into what's happening with the characters we left off with. So I'm going to finish it. And then, you know what? There's a book that's going to be on my worst books of 2020. Awesome. Um, but then I finished this morning because I read for so stinking long. I worked out way too long. It was dumb. Um, I finished the I almost said the poppy war, the dragon Republic. I'm so hot. My nose is getting all red. Anyways, I finished the dragon Republic and I thought it was great. I love Rin and this just like solidified how much I love Rin's character. She's one of my favorite female protagonists. I love, is it R.A. Kwong? Is it R.A.? Because I'm thinking of like R.A. Salvatore and I'm too lazy to get up and look. The author, I love her writing style. I love her sense of humor. I love how she writes her characters. I just thought that it was an excellent story. There were times that it, that it kind of dragged by a little bit and it wasn't a perfect book, but I ended up giving five stars because of the ending. And if you know what I'm talking about, I predicted both things that happened in the end. So I wasn't like shocked. I definitely saw them coming. However, I'm happy with the turn that it took because for me, if it didn't take those turns, that's kind of the difference between like young adult fantasy and adult fantasy. This whole series reads like a young adult book and not because of the events or the themes or the tones, but it's very easy to read, very fast to read. It's just very accessible to any age range, not content wise, but the way that it's written. So if it had wrapped up in, a, in the way that it didn't, it definitely would have gotten like 4.5 stars for me. But because of those twists that it took, made it that much darker and that much more like, okay, what's going to happen in the next book? Where's she going? I have a couple things I really, really want to see happen. So I hope that's the case. I look like I got punched in the nose. It's fine. <sighs> so anyways, I really enjoyed my time reading that. And I will definitely be picking up the third book because it's just a very enjoyable read. Um, you guys, I at least put down The Magician King, the sequel that I was talking about last weekend. I put it down for now because my audiobook loan returned anyways, and I just honestly wasn't interested and couldn't care less. And just in 2020, I don't want to read. I don't want to spend my time forcing my way through books I don't want to read if possible, since sometimes I just feel like I have to. So I'm reading The Outsider by Stephen King. I'm 13% of the way through the audiobook. I always love his audiobook narrators, but I'm very intrigued by the story so far. The crime that happens to this kid is sickening, and then we just learn more details that makes it even more sickening. And I'm so intrigued to find out where the plot's going, because from the very beginning, we know what happens with the murder. We know who supposedly did the murder or committed the crime because they get arrested. And we have all these eyewitness accounts of people seeing him and what happened. So like, what's really happening? Where's the plot? Like what, where's this going? So I'm very interested to see, okay, did somebody else really do this? And that's what the story is about. I like that there is like detective interview styles, little parts in between the other chapters. And I went with this one because honestly, a lot of people have um, recommended that I pick up The Outsider by Stephen King. That's what it's called, right? I think so. I'm really enjoying it so far. So crossing my fingers because I didn't tell you, I started this past week, I started A Little Life and I'm 20% of the way through it, which is a 33 hour audiobook. So that's a lot of hours I've already invested and I have a love hate relationship with it. So I don't have Audible. I did the free trial where you get two credits and I use one of my credits on it which and I'm a little bummed about. So I'm gonna go back to it. That's my plan because sometimes I love the book so much and I love the characters so much. And then other times I'm bored 
out of my mind. I would rather sit and watch paint dry. So I was just, I listened to it for, I don't know, four days and I was like, okay, I'm over this. I need something else. So that's why I picked up the Stephen King book. So, but I'm so excited because two of my goals were in 2020, more Stephen King and more classics. And in January, I will have read one Stephen King and one classic. So I'm so excited about that. But that's all I'm reading. Oh, and I finished, this is the longest clip ever. I'm so sorry, but I felt like I hadn't talked about books at all today. You just saw like random things. And I probably won't talk that much the rest of the night. Okay. So let me stop being annoying. I finished Wraithborn before my massage when I was waiting to go in today, which um, she said I was a disaster, by the way. I need to be going like every week because of running 30 to 50 miles a week. I run five days and then I play like two. I need a rest day, I know, but I'll figure it out. Anyways, Wraithborn. First of all, I love the art. I cannot lie. I love the art. I love everything about it. It's perfect in my opinion. It's very, it's not for everybody, I'm sure. I love how this one was like a little, it was like dark and there were creepy creatures, but they were still really well done. I liked the innocence of the girl that was in high school and how she was just so like sweet and um, kind of the changes that were made by the end. Probably gonna give it like a 3.5 out of five stars because there was really no like explanation of the magical stuff that was happening in this book whatsoever. Like what even Wraithborn is really for and like why she wanted it and it, but as far as I can tell there's only the one volume so please let me know if you guys know that there's another volume but I can't find it or read anything about it if there is but I would definitely pick up volume two if there is a volume two so that's two graphic novels I read so far this month and now that I'm finished with that I can finally pick up my physical copies of Monstrous because I've really just been in the mood to read graphic novels before bed and I need to pick up the next couple volumes of Full Metal Alchemist so I can finish that too because for some reason getting into the dense fantasy and it could be because this book sucks it hasn't been doing it for me before bed I like to read for just a little bit before bed so I've been reading the graphic novels yeah so I think that's just a good time for me to get in graphic novels and manga and it kind of is fun and chills me out and then I read my high fantasy in the morning so I will stop blabbering I see that my veggies my timer is going off talk to you guys later can you guys see how the cat is sitting on my knee she's <laughs> Carly you hear me Sitting on my knee. Rana Bear's over there and I just saw Owl Fox. Oh, there she is. We're hanging out here. I'm about to start The Heroes, I believe, by Joe Abercrombie. I think that's the middle book in the second series of like standalones in the first Law universe. So we'll see how that goes. Happy Saturday. Finished almost eight miles on the treadmill six of them running and just got to almost well let's see 10 miles on the bike and do you see what i'm finally reading do you know that picture joe abercrombie the heroes yay morning do you guys ever get sick of seeing this little girl what are you doing what are you doing She follows me everywhere. When I'm sitting here doing my makeup, she's gotta be right behind me watching. So this is the vlog in which I said, <laughs> hi, that I was gonna do a full day of eating. So let's go get some tea and vitamins and coffee and breakfast. Start this day off right. And I realize this might be kind of annoying for some people, but um, it's content that I'm interested in and that I wanna make. And since I want to create, I don't know, things that I like, I want to include it and feel free to skip ahead because it's not going to be the whole video. So let's go get some breakfast. She's ready. So I always start my morning with a hot cup of tea with fresh lemon in it. And the tea that I use is this lemon ginger one because ginger is great. And it's best to start your day off with warm water because it's good for your digestive system so it's much better than having like a big glass of cold water first thing in the morning after that i take all my vitamins my probiotics there's vitamin d biotin b12 ashwagandha passion flower a hair and nail supplement and then this is a xenopin which is that natural herb supplement that i really like so i take that and then drink my full tumbler of water with that 
Next, I make my coffee, which, yes, my French press is broken, and it's probably dangerous that I'm using it. And I just use the hazelnut ground coffee medium. It is the best, in my opinion. While I'm waiting for that, I'll show you my oats. So I have a half of a cup of oats here, and I left it this way without stirring it now, so you can see, like, I'm not kidding when I use that much cinnamon. The white is um, Himalayan pink sea salt because I am really weird and I prefer things salty. And um, it's kind of like how you add salt to cookies. It's kind of like that idea. Um, I would suggest not adding as much as me because I am really kind of an odd one about it. <laughs> but that's the way that I like it. I'm really particular about the texture of my oats. So I just mix those things together. So that's like a heaping half of a cup. Like realistically, if you weighed it out, it's probably closer to three quarters of a cup, but I don't care to be that exact. So then I add like a half of a, or no, a whole cup of like scalding hot water and mix it up. And I don't cook my oats until I'm done with my smoothie. I gotta add the vanilla. So I just add, it's kind of hard to do this with one hand. I add too much vanilla and that's probably not good for me, but you win some, you lose some. Stir that in because, okay, so I heat my oats up after I'm done with my smoothie because I like them to like sit in the water for a while, um, which kind of probably makes makes it more like the texture of overnight oats because it allows them to get like softer. I'm gonna stir these, hold on. So I just stir them up and then we let those sit here until I'm done with my smoothie. I know it seems weird, but trust me, it makes the texture better. So let's make the smoothie. I use the Silk Creamy Cashew Milk, 25 calories per serving. I use two servings. Oh, you have to get unsweetened. Well, I do anyways. I don't like things extra sweet. Oh, that's my timer for my coffee. Hold on. So I do like just over 16 ounces. And then we add in a big scoop of my vegan protein powder, which I've showed one other time. It's from Amped. Nutrition, like I said, it has that huge list of vitamins. It is vegan, cruelty-free. It is the best protein that I have found. I just do the organic frozen raspberries. Fill it real nice and full. Put it on the Ninja and let it do its job. Okay, she is beautiful. Ooh, we're overflowing. So I'm gonna eat this real quick before I make my oats and then I'll show you the oats. Okay, time to press the coffee. I leave it in there honestly for like probably almost 10 minutes, which could be too long for some people. I know most people do like four minutes maybe, but I like it. See how thick these got? Like it's literally so thick, but I like thick oats. So if you don't, don't take my advice. Putting it in the microwave for one minute. I added 30 more seconds, but it is really thick. And then I used just these organic chia seeds. So I just put one scoop of that. And then I put my ground flax seed just in this little Tupperware. And I use one of the scoops from the other thing. And this is less calories than the chia seeds. So I put a giant scoop in there. So I'm gonna mix all that up. I have my measured out two tablespoons of almond butter. I usually use either the Costco kind, the Whole Foods kind, or the Target kind, um, but all of them, the only ingredients are roasted almonds. So, perfect, love it. I'll show you that once the almond butter's in. There you have it. Isn't she beautiful with that almond butter? I know this looks like so much food, and honestly, this is probably too much for a lot of people with that, because it's probably close to, I don't know, everything total, I don't know, 600 calories maybe, but I work out a lot, so I need a lot of food. And if I don't do this, then I will be hungry in like five minutes. So there is meal one for the day. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. If not, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I forgot to mention, the thing about making it super thick like this is that it makes it like you're eating a giant bowl of cookie dough and that's what it tastes like to me. Because regular oats, the like runny, oh, I just can't do it. But this is like you're eating oatmeal cookie dough. I swear, I promise, it's so yummy. The key is the almond butter and the salt. <laughs> I'm editing my December book haul and Carly gets so mad when Duchess Rana comes and sits right by me. Girls, 
there's enough love to go around. <laughs> you guys see this in every video, do you not? This is every day of my life. Carly is just trying to get her to play with her tail so that she can be mean to her. And Ronnie still acts like a little kitten. So she cannot resist the tail. And I'm watching Step Up in the background while I'm editing this video because how many times is too many to watch Step Up? There is no limit. Or I suppose I should say the limit does not exist. <laughs> Hard to get any work done when you have to hold a baby in your hands the whole time. She's like, mom, pet me. So I've been sitting here like all afternoon. What time is it now? It is 2.03 and I have been getting a lot of progress done. I got my TBR shelf video edited. I got my, a couple other videos, oh, my December book haul, a couple other videos like scheduled and all set up and you know, all the good stuff that you have to do to get it ready. So anyways, at 3.30, I have to go meet my friend. We're going to the range to go shooting. I like to, I have my CPL, so I like to, every month or every other month, try to get to the range. Um, I generally go shooting out of my grandparents' house, but if I can't make it out, uh, like in the winter and bad weather and stuff like that, I like to make it to the range. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a pretty good shot. I'm better than most guys I know. Actually, any guy I've ever shot with, I think I have, um, better at <laughs> anyways so we're gonna go do that in a little while i'm going to listen to more of the outsider by stephen king on the way which i got to mm, i think maybe about 20 percent of the way through this morning because i was listening to it a bit more i want to finish it in january so i can like have one classic read and one stephen king read in january and um yeah i'm really enjoying it still because i'm so confused and it shouldn't be as intriguing to me as it is. I know this is not um, like a fan favorite of Stephen King fans, but I don't know. I really like it. I I just don't know because we have all this evidence for how this man committed this murder and we have eyewitness accounts and stuff like that, but he has an alibi and he has people to witness him where he was elsewhere the night of the murder. So, I don't know. I haven't read the synopsis because I don't like to, especially with thriller books um, or mysteries, because it just, I feel like, gives too much away sometimes. So, I just don't know where it's going. Like, did everybody set him up? And, like, are they conspiring against him? And he's actually innocent? Or did he fabricate this alibi and he actually did it? I don't know. It's very interesting so far. Like I said, I'm only 20% of the way through, so hopefully it will continue to be good, but I'm really enjoying it. And then I got to 17% of the way through The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie this morning while I was working out, which is book five in the First Law universe. So it's the second like trilogy. People say they're standalones, but they all go together if you ask me, because there's like repeat characters, which I think is very important. Because honestly, I wouldn't like them as much if you didn't see characters from the previous novels. I find Joe Abercrombie's books, his adult ones, almost rough to get into. Like because he's so character driven you start at like the most obscure spot sometimes like mid conversation not like a dramatic scene but like a very chill thoughts of this character that we're just meeting we have no idea where they're at or what's going on or what's the importance and we've never met this character before so it took me probably two chapters to get into it and of course now i'm loving it at 20 percent or 17 percent of the way through it already obsessed I love some of the new characters we met. I'm excited to see where the story goes. Obviously, there's still some warring going on. Um, so I'm just very excited to get farther into the novel. And I always enjoy every second of Joe Abercrombie books that I read. So I didn't end up starting it last night, by the way. I said I was going to and I laid in bed and watched Avatar. <laughs> and then I think I'm going to try to read volume three of Monsters. Well, I'm not going to read it all tonight. I'm going to start it. For I, You all are wild for sitting down and reading a graphic novel all in one sitting. I can't do that. My, ten, my attention just doesn't last that long. I'll probably read it throughout the course of the week, just a couple pages at a time, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. Let me know if you guys can relate. My shoulder is like dislocating <sighs> from how I'm trying to hold this camera right now. And I'm sore from my massage yesterday. So yeah, I'm going to eat some lunch. Get ready to go to the range and talk to you guys later. A cat mom. This absolutely never gets old when I walk into my room and I see this. They're just the sweetest girls. Say hello to YouTube, baby Rana.
Hello. And Owl, we can't, oh my God, I scared her. I'm so sorry, honey. You can't get too close to Owl with stuff like this. She's gotta come to you. Just thought you'd like to see the girls. Okay, it's lunchtime, so I figured I would show you guys. This is so hard to do with one hand. Let's see, big handfuls of spinach. I like pack it down in there. Then, this is just baby spinach that I buy. I hate eating big leaves of something in my salad, so I'm gonna chop it all up with some scissors. I'll show you in just a second. Spinach is chopped, it makes it much easier to eat that way. Then I just add this broccoli slaw, which is broccoli, carrots, and red cabbage. And I do like a pretty good serving of this. But I also chopped that up, so I'm gonna do that. Alrighty, broccoli slaw is diced up. It just makes it easier pieces to consume. I use about this much of an English cucumber, which I dice up, so I'll do that. So the cucumber is diced, and then the only dressing I use is 100% pure lemon juice. I apply a generous amount of that. I really like sour things, and I don't like salad dressing. I just think it's gross. And so the sour on this salad, since it's so sweet, is amazing. And dry salads are gross too, so that goes next. And then we add our blueberries just whatever seems like a good amount, that seems good. And raspberries, I used to add blackberries too, but this fruit for the salad, it costs so much already, and then blackberries out of season and such was getting so expensive, so I just went to blueberries and raspberries, which still costs enough, but it's a little better. So that's the fruit I do. Okay, the toppings are key in my opinion. I do sliced almonds, and that bag almost fell over again and unsalted sunflower kernels that are roasted. So I do two tablespoons of the sliced almond and four. Oh, these are half of a tablespoon. Wait, was that three or four? I lost count. Either way, it's a half of a tablespoon, not a whole tablespoon. So technically one tablespoon of this and two tablespoons of this. And then you mix it all up and enjoy. So time to devour and then I'll make my soup next. Did any of you guys ever watch Secret Life of the American Teenager when you were kids, if you're around my age? <laughs> because I did and I just found it on Hulu and I'm enjoying myself, shamefully. <laughs> so next I eat my soup. This is some riced cauliflower. So the only ingredient in it is cauliflower. And it's really great because it's just like rice. It picks up the flavor of whatever you're eating and basically it's like no calories. Heat that up for three minutes since it's frozen and then I add my soup, so I'll show you. So this is the veggie soup. My mom actually makes it for my sister and I a lot of times. She uses like a vegan veggie broth. There are potatoes, carrots, green beans, celery, tomatoes, corn, kidney beans, lima beans, peas, mushrooms. I don't know, everything you can think of. So when you add in the cauliflower rice, it makes it like super thick, like a stew rather than a soup because I'm not a soup fan. So I have that with my salad. Okay, so the last thing I have for lunch is these little, I make my own trail mix, I guess. So I put the banana chips in it, cashews, and little pieces of unsweetened mango, dried mango. I mix them all together and put them in these little cups. So it's a, just a little serving size. So that is the rest of lunch. So we're back in this spot because it's one of the only areas with enough light to film. And wouldn't that be something if my neighbors could just see me sitting here in the window talking to myself because you can't see my phone at all. That would be stellar. We'd love that. So I just got home from the range shooting with my friend. We did amazing today, if I do say so myself. We both shoot pretty frequently. And so, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, and the more often that you go and stay consistent with target practicing, then the better you are because obviously the more you do something, the better you are at it. And so we hadn't been shooting since we went out to my grandparents, but um, it was busy in the range today. Saturday afternoon is not the day. Oh, hi, Carly. It's not the day to go to the range because there were so many people, all the lanes were full. And then some people are shooting guns that just are a bit louder and so you flinch if you're me you're you're aiming and you're ready your eyes are just like and so then you get shaky which makes you a little less accurate but that's okay it was still a good time I'm glad that we got to go really dare she doesn't like to be held that much this is gonna last for like three seconds <laughs> you're my pretty girl my family is on the way over now we're gonna have an acai bowl night 
and watch I want to watch the Mandalorian they're still catching up on Harry Potter so it's going to be one of those but I'm kind of see she's already eating me but um, I'm kind of leaning towards the Mandalorian because we haven't started it yet so we're going to do that and probably what I'll do is like insert footage from tomorrow dinner so I can show you how to make the acai bowls because I'm most definitely not filming when my parents are here <laughs> how I would normally because that would just be weird for me and then I kind of want to make sure I have time to take a bath after they leave tonight so I can read in the bath and relax and get some more of the heroes read because I'm really loving it yeah so they'll be here soon I'll show you guys my gun I have to clean it and it's my baby love it so much makes me so happy so I'll do that now this is she um I clearly need to clean it, but I have the Springfield Armory XDM 9mm Compact, which is the perfect size for my hand. Yes, it's empty. I just put the magazine back in it, so we do not need to be scared. Got all my stuff out to clean it. But this is the gun that I'm the most accurate with. I have a lot of friends who I have shot with a lot over the past several years. And this gun never jams. It's absolutely my favorite. I will own Springfield Armory guns for life. I was born, it's where my parents died. That's exactly why he'll expect you to go, because it means something to you. Uh, yeah, but it means something to him too, Hermione. Uh, you know who... Almost done. 43 seconds left. Reading the Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. Loving it. About to hop, hop on the bike for a moment. So I'm just about finished up. About one minute left to get to just over 10 miles. I'm on the second part of the Heroes. Sorry I'm out of breath, this is probably really annoying, but one of the coolest battles just happened. It was so cool because obviously I don't think, it's not a spoiler to say that like the North is fighting the Union in the South. <laughs> Obviously that's what the whole series is about. And we are following these soldiers and warriors in the battle as they're just demolishing everyone. And you're switching from the North to the Union point of view, different characters, just tearing it up. And then one person, and then like the person you're following gets obliterated by someone from the other side. And then they're like, you know, their perspective, their point of view is how they're just the best. And then once again, they get taken out by someone from the other side. And it's just like this cycle. And it was like the coolest battle scene I've ever seen done because of how much it flipped back and forth like that. And there wasn't like one clear side winning at the time. It was just like you really saw the death and destruction from both sides. Totally loved it. I hope that makes sense. It was really cool. If not, you're just gonna have to read the first four books in the series so you can get to this one. <laughs> So I just returned. Today was a kind of busy day. I don't know if I even talked to you guys at all since you saw me on the bike. I'm thinking not. So obviously I biked this morning. I gave you a little check-in about the heroes. I haven't read anymore since then. I'm at 32% of the way through. So I would really like to read a little bit more tonight just to get a little bit farther. Super enjoying it. Kind of want to make it to 40%, but we'll see. And after that, I got all my lunches made, meal prep stuff done for the week. And then I went over to my parents' house and I got um, some biking in with my dad. We put our bikes on the trainers in the basement, which you could kind of see in that clip probably. And we did that while we watched The Mandalorian. So I finally got to begin The Mandalorian, which was great. Um, we only made it two episodes in. I'm really liking that so far. And that makes your working out super extra great because you get distracted by what you're watching so that was fun and then we had to go to the running lab 
and I had to get some new running shoes. I'll show you guys those. Like I said, I wear out my running shoes every three to four months. Four months is probably pushing it more like every three. I need a new pair, which sucks because they're so expensive. But if not, you ruin your feet, like literally, and then you get injuries everywhere else. So I ended up getting the same exact pair that I have now. I'll show you guys that. And Ronnie Bear. Hello, Munchkin. She's happy I'm back home because I've been gone all day. And then since my parents and uh, came over last night for dinner, I couldn't show you guys my regular dinner. So my full day of eating is now going to be continued tonight. And I'll show you guys my dinner here in just a little bit. But we just needed another clip of this darling. So this I have actually showed you guys before. I just um, kind of cut up into bite-sized pieces crowns of broccoli. I use just this um, coconut oil to spray it with so it cooks a little bit. And um, Himalayan pink salt on it. And I load it into my air fryer, which if you guys have never used an air fryer, it helps you to meet all of your vegetable needs because it makes your veggies so much better, I promise you. So that'll be done in 15 minutes. Putting my new shoes before we got started with dinner. So I hate colored shoes. I hate, hate, hate them. I always ask for all black, but they only had these and then the same color I have last time, which is like gray and teal. So I wanted something different. The New Balance 860 version 10 are what works for my feet. They are a stabilizing shoe because I put so many miles on my feet every week um, and I have to have that inner support. So yeah, this color is not bad. Like I said, black's my favorite color. I'm not a color person, but I'll take it. So I've talked about this a million times, so I'm not gonna bore you guys. So this is some of the veggies I eat before my acai bowl. So like I said, there is chickpeas, sweet potato, zucchini, Brussels sprouts, red pepper, yellow pepper, orange pepper, cauliflower, serrano pepper, carrot, onions. That might be everything. And I spray it with my coconut oil spray. And then I use garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes, and a little bit of parsley. Lots of red pepper flakes. I like it really spicy. So I eat this while I'm waiting for my broccoli to cook. You can never get too many veggies. I like so many servings of vegetables. And I swear you guys, I haven't been sick in like over a year. It really makes a difference. So my broccoli is a little well done, but as you can see, it's a real good serving size. And I kind of snack on a little bit of skinny pop, the white cheddar vegan kind, cause it's great, 100 calorie bag. So that is part two of dinner. The acai bowl, which I'm gonna make kind of quick because I've already shown you guys some of this stuff. So I start out with exactly eight ounces of unsweetened coconut milk. If we can get it open, voila. Then I use this bite-sized dragon fruit pitaya, approximately just under one cup. And strawberries and raspberries between those two together, about a cup, so two cups of fruit total. I'll add that in, then we'll catch up. I do not recommend buying strawberries this giant because I accidentally had to and it makes it really hard and then they don't want to go down in the cup like they're supposed to, which makes me have to blend it two times, which makes me super mad. Then I add one teaspoon of pitaya powder and one teaspoon of acai powder. So let me show you. I get these both on Amazon I showed you before. Freeze dried acai powder, organic, super juice powder, pink pitaya, 100% pure dragon fruit powder. You can get both of those on Amazon. They are the key if you're using any other fruit in addition to the, like if you're not using an acai, a frozen acai packet or pitaya, then you need those to make it taste like that. Then we're gonna add in one scoop of my vegan protein powder, which is the same exact stuff that I showed you in the morning with my breakfast smoothie. And you don't have to do that, but I like it to have, to have more protein and it makes it a little bit more filling. Plus it adds like the most amazing vanilla taste to it. 
So we're gonna blend this. We want to pour it into the bowl once we've ensured that there's no chunks left because if you make the mistake I do, I always pour it in the bowl and then there's chunks and I have to try to get it back in, which is super annoying. So then we add our toppings, one half of a banana, a handful of blueberries, some diced strawberries. And in my opinion, the granola is key. I use, I pre-portion mine out, but I use the coconut and cashew butter, Nature's Path Organic, and it is vegan. This is my absolute favorite. It is so great. So now I'm ready to devour this. The last thing I have to show you is my little energy balls, vegan chocolate chips. And I know a lot of you guys have asked for the recipe actually. So I promise when I make them next, I will show you and do the recipe then. Chill in with the kitties. I've made it to day two of the battle, which is on page 215. So I'm making some good progress through the heroes. There are so many maps in this book. Like we're midway through. This is probably, I don't know, the fourth map at least so far. And they're so helpful and so necessary. I think it's great. So this vlog is already so long, way too long. I don't know what I've been doing lately. I have been enjoying my night reading the heroes after getting back from the running lab and making dinner, making some more of those mini muffins I showed you guys last week, which let me know if you want the recipe for. I restarted over Gilmore Girls this weekend. It's about 9.30 now, so it's time to get into bed. I might start a new graphic novel, or I might just continue my watch through of Avatar The Last Airbender. I know some of you guys have said that you really like these longer vlogs, which I appreciate, um, but I know they're getting like, ridiculously long, like almost an hour, which personally, I love watching really, really long vlogs of my favorite booktubers. So that's something that I love. However, I don't know if you guys find it terribly annoying. So let me know what vlog length you guys prefer. Cause I've had some that are 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes. And it's hard to get out a decent amount of your thoughts about the books that you're actually reading in like a 30 minute vlog in three days but also include like a little bit of what else you're doing. And I don't usually put any montages and stuff like that because I personally do not like watching video montages, you know, where it's just like music and somebody doing something like sitting here reading. I think that's very boring, but I guess I just ramble way, way, way too much. So comment and let me know what you guys think. I'll end the vlog here just because all I'm going to do is watch some Avatar and go to bed. And thank you guys for hanging out with me this weekend. I'll see you next time.